Hi, my name is Tess and in this video I'm going to take you guys along with me as I set up my first bike trainer. The days are getting shorter and that cooler winter weather is on its way. And whether you're like me and you struggle with depression or you're just someone who wants to stay in shape, we've all got a mind toward what's going to be my game plan if I'm going to stay on track over winter. I've been wanting to invest in a trainer, especially a smart trainer for a really long time, but I know that if depression or anxiety are a part of the equation for you, or even if just the technology and bike tech is intimidating, it can be hard to even get started. It's a little overwhelming. So that's why I want to bring you guys along with me. And in this video, I'm going to share a lot of the standards and things that you need to consider, especially if you're going to be hooking up a mountain bike to one of these trainers. So whether you're getting the Wahoo Kicker Core or you're looking at a different trainer, there's going to be some nuggets of wisdom that you can glean. So here's a quick look at everything that came in the box with my Wahoo Kicker Core. One thing that's really helpful to keep in mind when you're shopping for trainers is that they're typically designed for road bikes first and mountain bikes second. In some cases, you'll need to do a little bit of research and see if there are any additional adapters you're going to need for your trainer to make it work with your specific bike. In my case, Wahoo has a lot of great adapters that come with this particular model. So that makes my job here pretty easy. I've got a yoga mat that I'm going to set my trainer up on and hopefully that will help prevent any slippage once I'm actually using this. I'm gonna get started by putting on the legs. This is really simple. There's just two bolts to get each leg on and it even comes with the little tool you need to tighten the nut. These are little plastic nut covers that will go on here. Another cool thing about this one is it does partially collapse to take up a little bit less space if you're traveling with it or storing it. All right, I'm done with this tool now that I've got the legs on. And I'm also going to set the electronic cords aside because today we're just focusing on the mechanical setup of this. With this kind of trainer, you're gonna be taking the rear wheel off and connecting the drivetrain directly to this. So in order to make this compatible with my bike, I need a cassette that is going to be compatible with my bike. A lot of people might have like an old late 90s or early 2000s mountain bike or road bike that they use and they set up on their trainer and then that's just all they use it for and that can be a really great way to do it. But for me, I am going to be using one of my mountain bikes and I don't wanna to have to swap the cassette on and off the trainer every time I wanna take the bike out on the trail and then reverse the whole process to put it back on the trainer. So what I did was I picked up a SRAM NX cassette I picked this cassette up from competitivecyclist.com and they're actually the sponsor of today's video. And if you use the code DUSTYBETTY15, that's gonna get you 15% off your first order. There's a lot of things I love about Competitive Cyclists. They have fantastic customer service. They've got really quick and easy returns and exchanges. And they also have a live chat feature on their website, which means if you have a gear question that you want to get an answer to before you place your order, you can get those answers in minutes instead of waiting days to get an email back, which is huge. So make sure you head over to competitivecyclist.com and use that code DUSTYBETTY15. So I picked up my Wahoo Kicker from Competitive Cyclist. Like I said, I also bought this cassette to use with it. And the other thing I got in my latest order are the speed and cadence sensors. Now, if you love Wahoo products as much as I do, then check out all of the Wahoo trainers that you can find on Competitive Cyclist. The Wahoo Kicker Core that I got is around $900, but they also have a $500 Wahoo trainer option that still has those smart trainer capabilities. Um, so there's a lot of options. And even if you don't wanna go for a smart trainer, if you want something simple and affordable, they have a ton of options on competitive cyclists. So make sure that you check that out. Whether you're looking for a trainer or some winter apparel, or maybe you need to get a new fender on your bike for the winter season, make sure you head over to competitive cyclists so that you come into the winter season prepared. I'll link these products in the description below along with some of my other favorite products. And having the link to this SRAM NX cassette could be really handy for a setup like this. So make sure that you keep watching because we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. Let's work on getting this cassette on. So we've got all of these little shapes around here and they're mostly the same size except for this one is a little bit narrower. So we gotta make sure that we line the cassette up with that correctly. So first I'm gonna squeeze this little pin 
out, but I wanna keep these all lined up if I can. I'm gonna set these aside. It ships in this little driver shaped thing that has all the grooves, keeps everything perfectly lined up. Now, it's designed so that you can line it up perfectly with the driver and then just slide the whole thing on at once. I'm gonna show you what it would look like if I'm gonna set these on one at a time. I wanna line it up with the small groove. There's also gonna be these little spacers that go in between all of these. Spacer. Spacer. You wanna be really careful not to cross thread this piece. Now that I've gotten the thread started with my hand, I'll switch to the tool. All right, so I'm just checking to make sure I get the right through axle adapters on the correct sides. By the way, these instructions are awesome. They've done a really good job. I am boost through axle, so I'm gonna to need to put the C adapter on the cassette side. And then the D adapter is gonna go on the opposite side. There's kind of this center ring, and then this side has a little bit that sticks out, and this side has rather more that sticks out. So for 148 boost spacing, we're gonna to want to put the side that has more sticking out. Oh, like a glove. My bike is attached to the trainer. This is a big moment. This is my Ibis DV9 that I have on here. I think it looks great. This is gonna be an awesome setup. Now, whether you're interested in a trainer just like mine or you're interested in something else, there are some really important things that you need to be aware of. One of them is axle spacing. So my modern mountain bike has boost axle spacing, which is 148. Kind of an older standard for modern mountain bikes is 142 millimeter. So you need to pay attention and make sure that whatever trainer you're looking at is going to accept the axle spacing of your bike. And then you also need to know if you're going to have to purchase additional adapters to make your mountain bike fit your trainer. Now there's a lot of trainers out there that allow you to keep your rear wheel on the bike. And sometimes that rear wheel will be spinning on little rollers. A lot of people like to put a slick tire on their rear wheel so that it will keep the noise down so that you could still watch something without having the loud of, of your knobby tires as they go across the roller. So that could be something to think about. Maybe you get a cheap back wheel and mount a slick tire to it. So my wheels for this bike are 29 inch. You might have 27.5 or maybe even 26 inch wheels. So make sure that that is gonna be compatible with the trainer that you're looking at. Even if you're going for a wheel off trainer, you'll still need to pay attention to the compatibility for the wheels because that does impact the geometry of your bike and it will impact how your bike fits on the trainer. You also need to make sure that the trainer you're looking at, if it does involve having your rear wheel on, you need to make sure that it will accommodate the width of the tire that you're planning to put on it. If you have a trainer that connects directly with your drivetrain like this one, the other thing you need to be aware of is your driver setup. This Wahoo Kicker Core comes with an HG driver, which is the old standard driver. Now, if you're running a 12-speed mountain bike, you may need to change that driver. So if you're running SRAM 12-speed, this is the hub that your drivetrain was intended to work with. And if you're running Shimano 12 speed, that's gonna be the micro spline. It's gonna be this one right here. I have got, I've got a hack for you. So if you get the SRAM NX cassette like I got and put on here, it will be compatible with that HG driver that came on the Wahoo Kicker Core. So the NX cassette is going to be a lower end cassette. So it's gonna be heavy, but it doesn't matter because we've got this mounted to a trainer. The SRAM NX cassette will be compatible with the HG driver that comes on the Wahoo Kicker Core. And this cassette will be compatible with 12 speed drive trains, both SRAM and Shimano. So that is the tip, that's the trick, is that this could save you from having to buy a new driver for this bike. So if you have a 12 speed drivetrain on a mountain bike you wanna mount on this, that is a really, really helpful thing to know. 
And if your bike isn't shifting great when you first put it on here, you may just need to adjust your derailleur a little bit. Also, if you have a wheel off trainer model like this, you may want to get that little spacer that comes in your brakes when you buy them new, that little plastic spacer. Pop that back in there so that in case you grab the brakes, it doesn't squeeze the pistons together because it's a lot of work to get those pried apart if you get those um, pressed together pretty firmly. Another thing you may want to consider is running a fan that blows on your face because you don't really think about it, but when you're outside, the air is moving and the faster you go, the more you get some wind kind of moving around you. So to be in a room where the air is completely, you know, stagnant can be pretty stifling on a trainer. So maybe think about getting a fan. They make one specially for trainers, but I don't necessarily think that you have to get a trainer specific one. If you struggle with depression or anxiety or other mental illnesses, you know that there's a lot of components to um, keeping yourself functioning well. There's kind of a medical side that you may have to address. There's a therapeutic side and there's also a lifestyle side. And a really big lifestyle component for me is getting exercise. Um, so that is my goal is, uh, you know, I would like to stay in shape over winter, but more than anything, I wanna make sure that I'm getting the exercise because it helps my brain function a lot better. And I know a lot of you guys can relate. If the thought of getting your trainer set up is still overwhelming, that's totally okay. You know, we all have those times. Don't hesitate to reach out to a friend, make it something that you do with someone. Um, and hopefully that will take some of the stress out of it and make it exciting because these are exciting times. I'm stoked to have this trainer. Um, I'm excited to share with you guys um, some of the things I learned about unlocking the smart capabilities in an upcoming video. And maybe there will even be an opportunity to do some virtual group rides over the winter. So we'll see. We'll see about all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it or you found it helpful. Don't forget to go to competitivecyclist.com and use that code DUSTYBETTY15. Thanks so much for watching. Get dusty.